Hello, and welcome to the Network Security Podcast, episode 250, for August 6, 2011. We are coming to you sort of live from DEF CON on Saturday night. And this is the culmination of a long time of podcasting. We have a number of podcasters who are in the audience, and we want to thank them for coming, for showing their support. We have a lot of people who are out there who have been listening to podcasts for as long as we've been stupid enough to record them, who've been stupid enough to listen to them for a quite a long time. Uh, and this has been a very long road and very interesting. About five years ago, you one sound day, so depressed. This has been a very long road. No, that's drunk, not depressed. Okay. Uh, I would like to start off today, as always, by introducing my co-host. First of all, Rich Mogul. Thanks, Marty. <laughs> You're just saying that because I took my pants off in my last panel. I, I wasn't going to mention you are just robing at all. Not all of my pants, just that the outer layer. And I really, really don't want to talk about other people who took their clothes off in your last panel either. Uh, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, ooh, the dollar. Yeah, yeah. There's a reason why when the, the um, um, donations for the EFF were handed off, they were handed off with a case of hand sanitizer. <laughs> um, now that Rich has said hello, I'd like to introduce my other co-host, Zach Lanier. How are you doing today, Zach? Sitting here, sitting here, sitting here. Wow, that was that was quite quite the uh, the applause. Uh, and Rich, they just they don't really like you, evidently. Um, I'm okay. I'm uh, I have a cool new haircut, courtesy of my coworkers who um, roofied me first, and then I just woke up. I woke up with this hair. I promise. So. Does your girlfriend like it? She um, she approves. <laughs> as long as she approves, I don't care what the rest of these people say. Well, you know, we started, I started this podcast about five years ago, as I was saying, and it started one day because I'd listened to a bunch of other people talk about, uh, about what interested them. I, I'd heard people talk about the things that were going on in their lives. It had nothing to do with security. And then I heard this thing called Security Now, and I realized, you know, I could probably talk more directly to the people who were interested in security than they could, and even if they didn't, if I couldn't, I mean, I would get some feedback on, on how I could improve my own security career. Now, that went on for a couple of years, and then one day I went, you know, I'm really getting burnt out on this. And at that point, I turned to a friend of mine who had just left Gartner and said, you know, Rich, you really can talk. You talk a lot. <laughs> In fact, sometimes we have a hard time stopping you from talking. And uh, would you come on the show with me and talk for a little while each week? We're, we do this half hour. I do this half hour thing. I think it would be a lot better to have you talk to me and us bounce ideas off of each other rather than just me talking. And Rich said something. Uh, what were you going to say, Rich? No, no, we were, we were just trying to figure out why the hell we agreed to do this. You know, I've been trying to figure four that out. Four years ago, in my case. And I was uh, going to say, I've been trying to figure out that, that, that out for th four years. And then a couple of years ago, we had a ticket to give away to DEF CON and to Black Hat, and we said, hey, would one of our listeners like to come in and do this and do some podcasts, do some interviews from DEF CON and Black Hat? And this guy named Zach Lanier just kind of said, I'll do it. And ever since then, Zach, you've been a, a valuable member of the podcast. I don't know if I would say valuable, but uh, no, yeah. I was, uh, I was, I was uh, about to not be um, employed. So I figured, hey, what, what better time than now to, uh, to join, join Network Security Podcast? Just in time to be a professional podcaster, move back in with your parents after losing your job? Yeah. Well, okay. I mean, I figured, uh, if, you know, this fails, I can just go into like be a social media strategist or something. <laughs> and you know, five, four and five years ago, there weren't a lot of podcasts out there. There weren't a lot of people who who were willing to put their voice out there. But over the time, it has changed considerably. It's not. It's no longer just a few people. There are a ton of podcasts out there. There are some very good security podcasts. In fact, there are some that I will unashamedly say are much better than anything we do. Um, and hopefully tonight we'll take a couple minutes to get some of those people up on stage and talk to you. Um, who should we start with? Who's here? Well, only one of them seems to be here right now, so, and he's sitting in the front row. And uh, I, know, I know you want to play with your phone more, and it, it was important, so come on up. 
we would like to invite up to the, the table Chris John Riley. So, Chris, which podcast do you do again? Um, I'm not really sure, to be honest. I think it's called Eurotrash. So, where can people find Eurotrash? On the interwebs. <laughs> Just Google it. Just so it's Google known it. as a You'll hostile witness. <laughs> Just search for bad European security podcasts. We'll be the first one on the list. You know, one of, Chris is a great example of one of the best things about being a security podcaster is that over the last five years I've made some great friends and Chris is one of them. And, you know, there's not a lot of people who you can, you can turn to and know you're going to get support. Chris is one of them. Really? <laughs> so, so, Chris, being from the Euro Trash podcast, we're finding that it seems that a lot of, uh, you know, um, LulzSec and Anonymous being arrested is happening over in Europe. Um, do you have any personal opinions on those particular douchebags? I mean, people. <laughs> Why are you calling Chris a douchebag? Mm. I didn't do it. It wasn't me, and you can't prove anything. Um, yeah, I guess we just have the angriest hackers. I don't know. It's just the way things are. I mean, it's always been a European thing. Political activism and uh, hacktivism has always been a big thing in Europe. I mean, just look at CCC, for example. It's... Uh, just seems to be the way things are in Europe right now. So, I, I mean, I, used, I made a disparaging statement there, and, and it was unpurposely because uh, I'm actually a firm believer in activism, hacktivism uh, as well, and other kinds of social action when, when called for. But I'm getting the impression these are people that are just kind of messing around and breaking into things to break into things and using uh, potential causes as excuses for activities they would probably engage in anyway. Um, what do you think? Or am I just the douchebag? No, well, I mean, people just do it for fun. I mean, you get bored late one night, you've been drinking too much, you hack a website, why not say you're anonymous and put the information out there? I mean. <laughs> well, I mean, the, the name is sort of telling, Rich. Lulz, Lulz Sec. So. I thought it was Louise Boat. And it, yeah, <laughs> the Lulz. Actually, Chris, you bring up a good point. I don't know if anybody's seen one of these, and what I'm holding up is this kind of pinkish-orange card. And, you know, somebody stopped me last night and out of the blue when I was having dinner with my family and said, are you on the Internet? <laughs> okay, this is DEF CON. I avoid the Internet at all costs. On Where else would I get my porn? <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's it, it, other places. And my wife and kids are in the, oh, in the audience, please. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. <laughs> so, so they handed, us this little, they handed me this little thing after saying, are you on the Internet? Well, no, not here, but I work for Akamai, and we pretty much are the Internet, so yes, I guess you could say I am. And, you know, it says DEF CON 19, and it has a picture of the LulzSec guy, or the anonymous guy, and it says, call this number at 2300 uh, uh, hours. Now, what would you guys think if you received something like this? Does the word trap, does the word... Oh, this is going to be weird. Come Should to we, mind at all? Let's call it right now. Who, Actually, why okay, so the, the number is, and you might want to write this down because... Wait, wait, wait. Let me get my phone app up. You guys can, can call it at, at 2300 too because, quite frankly, I think it's a trap, but if we can DOS them or DDOS them, I think it would be kind of funny. So the number is 1-402-672- Someone's already dialing it. 8571. Oh my god, that's my mobile number. I was, I was going to say, I heard from a uh, woman sure lost that, and sure woman I don't go. So, we a cheeky woman at the end. Again, at the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options to leave a callback number. Should we tell them they're live on the Network Security Podcast? I'm good. All right. Well, that was pathetic. I heard for pissing off LulzSec, Network Security Podcast got owned tomorrow. So Now they Thanks have my everybody. cell phone number, so i just been pwned. There's a guy in the front row with his laptop out already. <laughs> Where were we going with that? <laughs> you were the one talking, man. No, oh, we weren't going anywhere. We were following. Okay, I just wanted to get the number out there so somebody can figure out what that's supposed to be and what party it's supposed to be, or if it is, really is a trap. 
So one of the other interesting things, so I got a call, um, I ended up doing a press interview thing the other day about the NSA and other government agencies recruiting at DEF CON. And, you know, it, it, it kind of seems strange to me that all of a sudden this would be in the news. How many people here have been to DEF CON before? How many people here have seen feds recruiting at DEF CON before? Yeah, I mean, it, it's been going on for quite a long time. I mean, obviously. Oh, what, I see a smile, Zach. No, I'm swiping uh... the... No, just... <laughs> you got this, the Zach smirk. I, there, there's something you, coming. You, we, we record over Skype and not on video. How would you know what the smirk looks because like? Because we go drinking You just hear sometimes. it? Do you hear it? You hear it over the internet? Well, yeah. You know, we, we actually can hear the it. green light by your camera. It means we're watching. <laughs> that's because I let you watch. <laughs> we, we like to, to watch. watch. <laughs> Ouch. That usually costs. Yeah, so I thought I'd get the opinions here. You know, it was kind of interesting because there's these websites now. So this has happened within the last week or so. Somebody did a big blog post on, you know, uh, what was it? Don't sell out to the NSA or. Um, does anybody remember that one? I don't read. Okay. Well, great. It's going to be a really short show. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so there were a bunch. <laughs> there was apparently some big thing in the news about the anti-NSA versus the NSA thing going here on DEF CON. Uh, I thought I'd kick it over to these guys. Any opinions on that? Are you a sellout if you actually go try and get employed to do security and you just happen to also enjoy going to DEF CON? You know, if they money. want to recruit my kids, I don't care. Oh, come on, please, say something. Go. go. Banana hammock. I don't know. Banana, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's the answer. Wow. I mean, it's not like this shit hasn't been going on for years anyway. I mean, it's... And since when has the news been important? I mean, face it, I've seen American news. Trust me. It's, oh, yeah, so... <laughs> it's, it's not valid. <laughs> Rupert Murdoch. <coughs> news of the world. Yeah. yeah. So, so, Chris, actually, to get you... Like, <laughs> To get you to oh, okay. To get you talking, Chris. Why did you start the Euro Trash, Trash podcast? What what was the impetus for that? Um, I listened to the first episode of the NetSec podcast and thought, wow, I'm sure we could do this too. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It seemed like a good thing to be doing. Everyone was podcasting, and I just thought I could be internet famous if I do this. Uh oh. So, yay! I'm internet famous. For those who are listening to this after the fact, Paul and Larry just walked into the room and are launching hundreds of, uh, well, not schmoo balls, but core security They're balls. They're launching Paul balls. All throughout the room. People who want to play with Paul's balls. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody wants to play with Paul's balls. Who hasn't wanted to take one of Paul's balls to the face? <laughs> so now we will have a moment of chaos while Paul throws his balls all around the world. <laughs> Is this like a competitive thing? Like you just come in and ruin our podcast? Because, like, yeah, you can't make it suck more, can you, Zach? I mean, and now for a commercial break. By the way, Spawn, do not throw all those balls up here. You, By you, Spawn, he means his children who are in the audience. And... Oh, you are the only two I have control over. All right, Paul, Larry, stop with the balls. Get up, get up, come get, get up here, Paul, here. Larry. <laughs> <laughs> just protect, just protect the alcohol. So, <laughs> just get just up so, here. Just so everybody knows, in the last two years, we've done um, a podcasters meetup and. For whatever reason, that just didn't get organized this year. But we kind of wanted to commemorate the episode 250 of the podcast and, and invite as many of the podcasters that we know up as possible. I just have one question. Do you have a bottle opener? Oh. <laughs> no, but why the alcohol? I know somebody who does. Excellent. All right, I'm better now. So back to you, Chris, before somebody throws a ball at you. Why did you get involved in podcasting? I don't know. It just seemed like a good thing at the time. There wasn't a whole lot of coverage in Europe. Whoa. Well, that was close. So, Not the beer people. <laughs> so, what has been the single biggest event in your podcasting career so far? Well, that would be joining you on the NetSec podcast episode 250. Good answer. Yeah. <laughs> do, I, do I get paid now? No. Five dollars. Five dollars. Five dollars. Ten dollars oh, for whoever hits the beer. <laughs> people. What about not the beer do you not understand? 
If they can get it, they can get it. I don't, I don't want to. Okay. Balls. So, Paul and Larry, now that you've joined us. Okay, for those that don't know, this is Paul and Larry from the Paul.com Security Podcast. Paul and Larry. Oh, that's nice. Paul likes <laughs> taking balls to the face. Paul got a face Only shot in yours. Vegas. <laughs> and, uh,. Oh, sorry. You brought your family here. Um, for those that don't know, I think Paul and Larry got started just before Marty did. Nice one. They, they were got, the first one. They were, they, were the, they were the first real security podcast as opposed to Security Now, which is not really a security podcast. They started about three or four days before I did, I think. Well, actually, you guys recorded several weeks before I did, but didn't publish till weeks later. Yeah, we still have to figure that out. Yeah, we're, we're still working on that, actually. <laughs> yeah, we, we had to figure out how to do a podcast, like how to publish it and all that stuff. So. You're still figuring it out. I've yes. heard the, the, the editing quality that you guys that, have. That's how lame we are. It took us five weeks to learn how to use Audacity. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what, got you, what made you guys decide to start podcasting? Uh, well, for me, I, I gave a regular presentation to a university that I work for. I like the latest computer security news and stuff. So for whatever reason, that ended, and my coworker who was referenced on the show as Duxta, said, you should do a podcast. And then we did. Heads. <laughs> so that's how we got started. Yeah, so, so when it, what, it, what it was in the beginning was just a bunch of security guys getting together at a conference or you know, on, on a Friday night and having beers and talking about, hey, dude, did you hear about X, Y, Z? And, well, yeah, maybe we should record this. Maybe someone else would want to listen to this. Oh. <laughs> And sure enough, 250 something episodes later, people yeah. are still listening. Yeah, what, what number are you guys on? 254. Oh, I don't know. 50, 54 is coming up, maybe. Uh, and so, what's the biggest event that's happened to you because of podcasting? Uh, I don't know. That's a good I mean, question. other than your, your job. Yeah, yeah. you got a job. <laughs> a job. <laughs> that's the rule on Paul.com. You either have to you know, work for a sponsor and then they become a sponsor, or if you're on the show, go work for someone who is a sponsor. So we're pretty nice. <laughs> the pauses you Jericho's got some great accuracy over there. What have you been practicing at home? <laughs> you throwing squirrels in your backyard or something? <laughs> yeah, but he hasn't managed to hit me yet. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> nice. nice. He's not throwing these kinds of balls at them, though. Yeah, but the faces are all cut out with a hole right around the mouth. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's Jericho from attrition.org, and you can tell he loves us. So I, I mean, it's tough to say, like, one particular instance, but, um, you know, certainly I think the marathon we did for Hackers for Charity, like, that was really cool, like, to use our listeners um, and our podcast as a vehicle for a good cause. That probably sticks out in my mind. It's gotten you a lot of attention. It's gotten you to, to places you couldn't go otherwise. I mean, it's, it's been a good thing, hasn't it? Oh! <laughs> And that was another dodge. Yeah, people actually like, wanted my autograph. I'm like, why? <laughs> That's the weirdest thing about being a podcaster. You go, you guys actually listen week after week? Right. It's amazing. Check <laughs> I actually, uh, yeah, exactly. I actually signed an autograph um, for a 16-year-old and a 13-year-old that both listen. And then I felt really bad for corrupting the youth of America. As you should. <laughs> As I should. And then he realized it was the DEF CON social engineering contest. <laughs> yes. Um, it's, it's fucking where was I going with that? I don't know. As a, you can tell, by the way, that we do a lot of editing after the fact normally. Uh, some of these things that we're going, hum, uh, what should we say next, is actually something that happens quite a bit in the live podcast. Uh, yeah, great. This is good. Oh, dear Lord. I'm really glad. Um, I'm really glad that for happened. listeners, somebody just just took the entire box of about 700 oh. swoop balls. I lost my balls. Thanks for finding them. Thanks. And is uh, and good. putting your hands all over them. So this is <laughs> yeah, antagonizing them. That's gonna help us. All right, so one of the things we do on the podcast is always pick news stories and those sorts of things. So instead, we've got you guys here in the audience. Let's get a little bit participatory. Somebody throw out a topic you'd like us to talk about and, and for you yourself to talk about. Goat Stop, porn. Don't say balls. Goat, goat porn. Whoa, wait. 
Don't leave that up there. That was close. All right, who's got a topic other than balls or goat porn? Someone, someone in the audience said APT um, to, try and be, to try and be funny Drink. and fail. How about what? Good. My coworkers are hitting me with balls. DEF CON. He shoots his scars. Who what? brought the balls anyway? You know what? Yeah, so that's a good one. So we're on the uh, late into the uh, basically the third day or the second full day of DEF CON. What have you guys seen so far that you liked? Fail panel. Fail panel. Anybody at the fail panel? That was a nice re- how the hell did that come from behind my head? <laughs> yeah, we made $800 for the EFF by you guys buying waffles. So, beer waffles, let's be clear. And if you want to put more money up here, what? <laughs> Blue waffles? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I, I lost that one. So I'm going to cut it over to these guys. Paul, Larry, uh, the start with? go-go dancers at the I bar. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing reminds me more about the importance of my job as a parent of two uh, daughters than coming to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Zach? What's uh, stood out for you so far with DefCon? This. No, no, seriously. <laughs> Seriously, this is the only thing I've really gone to. Um, <laughs> no, it's, uh, I like the venue. We've are, uh, I, so, somebody said, um, you know, it kind of is weird that they would pick a hotel that they've already outgrown. So um, I don't really know where to go, where they could go from here. But uh, you know, it's good. It's good venue. Um, I watched a couple talks on television. That's that's really the extent of my DefCon experience so far. So this is becoming informative, Chris. Oh, this is going to be really informative. I didn't even know there were talks at DEF CON. <laughs> I thought it was just like a big drink up thing where everyone gets together. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you guys are really good shots. <laughs> it's not good. This is turning into the ShmooCon podcasters meet up all over again. I, I like it's like watching a tennis match. <laughs> not the beer. Oh. This is getting. Uh... Oh. <laughs> All right, so I took a, I took a, a soccer ball to the face yesterday. Um, I would like to not have that happen again. So you know, not the, be great. not the face. I'm gonna go on the table. Wait, okay. you, you have no idea how loud that is, right? <laughs> save them for the rot. Save them for the end. <laughs> Yeah, let's, we have a really important thing to play toward the end, and if we don't get to that... Um, yeah, we'll let, we'll let the shmoo balls go. You can throw shmoo ball, I'm sorry, core impact, core impact, core impact balls, balls um, you know, when that happens, so... What was that? Poor, yes, poor impact balls. <laughs> that is what I said. Okay, so we got one more podcaster to bring up, Mr. Joseph Sicoli. Now, one of the... <laughs> One of the sincerest forms of flattery is imitation, and nobody imitates the Network Security Podcast more than Southern Fried Podcast. Wait, wait, he didn't tell you he's on Paul.com now, didn't you see Twitter? Yeah, there, didn't you see the picture? There's an. I know that he was on. I'm on Paul.com now. Like I've been hanging out with him all weekend. Well, you Big were. Big round of applause! Yeah. yeah. You were also on the Network Security Podcast Martin, for a little a, while a, as we traded you for for Zach. Martin, Indeed. There's, a, there's an audience member question. Marty? We have a question from the audience. Question from the audience? That's not going to go well. Oh, not Jericho. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody wants to hear from Jericho. <laughs> oh. And Jericho says if every podcast he got to throw stuff at us, he'd listen more. I thought exotic liability was all about people getting hit in the face with balls. So. <laughs> yeah. while, while being drunk. Who's, uh, who else is here? Where's Jaded? Is Jaded security? You're Jaded security? Oh, you're the co-host. Where is he? Is your other, is your other half? Who's throwing these things? Come on up here. Come up here and take some balls in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was uh, thrown out of the club. Hey, is there more beer down there? Oh, 
Yeah, we brought some, yeah. Here. Yeah, we, we, drank, we brought Drink. some, but I think Brian's drinking it. Who's got a, Good. do you have a bottle opener? Come on um, up for a second, guys. Hey, spread out. And uh, just tell us, to, just give us a quick second and tell us why you got in secu- into podcasting, as opposed to just security, but why did you start podcasting? I'm not me. We listened to Paul. <laughs> Wait, you listened to Paul and you still got into to podcasting? Yeah, we, did, we didn't want to be Paul. <laughs> on the mic, we're recording. So, Wait, you listened and then didn't want to be us? Is that what you said? Yeah, we listened to like two episodes. You know this, man. I told you. <laughs> so we wanted to be, uh, we're, we're, so, uh, we're a daily podcast, so we do it Monday through Friday. Uh, we've managed to piss off Jericho and just about everybody else by having Legat on. Uh, where's... Chris. Well, speaking of uh, of Chris. Mr. Chris Evans, we'll have have some words from him later. You mean Greg Evans? Greg, 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 Gregory Chris. Evans. Sorry. Chris Evans is that actor, that really dreamy oh. one, world's yeah. number one hacker, Greg Evans. Did you hear? What the fuck did you this opportunity Greg, to Greg get Evans away. won an award today. What for? He won Charlatan of the Year. <laughs> Woo! Well, it's just too bad we didn't know that in time to include that in the questions for the interview. We're going to be playing in a few moments here. Bummer. Oh, they weren't supposed to say what it was. What is Is that Mr. Evans' award? Yes, it's going to be on eBay. All proceeds are going to a 501c3 instead of him. Okay, so the, the award... The award for Charlatan of the Year is in Jericho's hands, which is really, really disturbing. Um, but it will be going on eBay, and the proceeds will be going to a charity of his choice. So keep an eye out on that from on attrition.org and on eBay. It's OSF or EFF. And by the way, if you guys want to leave any money up here for EFF, we will make sure it gets to us, gets to them, I mean. <laughs> Freudian slip. <laughs> we will not use it to buy beer, I promise. So. so you guys were saying about why you got into security because you thought you could do it better than Paul.com. No, that's a joke, dude. So it was just a bunch of guys that were on calls driving in, in Atlanta, and the commute is like two fucking hours, so... <laughs> that's to go three blocks. Yeah, so we had, yeah. And, yeah. Literally. So uh, essentially what we were doing was just kind of talking back and forth and saying, hey, did you read this story? Did you see that? What did you think about that? And we made the uh, mistake of recording it. And it made the mistake of saying that it's a daily podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Paul lost his balls. Paul's balls have been scattered all over the place. This is dangerous. There's a reason why do, Schmoo do I get a hazard are pay for this episode? Sto- kept to Schmoocon? You don't using Rick, protect your laptop or protect his face, one of the two. Stand in front of him. I don't need his ass in my face. <laughs> <laughs> so Rich, you have we have really some sure recording we would like you to hear of an interview. This is similar to an interview you guys have done. We only have a few minutes for it, but we would like to, to hear your guys' um, how to put it, um, reaction to some of the things that, that Mr. Gregory Evans has to say. Now, you know, we, we had literally, we had a half an hour to talk to Mr. Evans a couple weeks ago. And in that half an hour, we got to ask three questions. Uh, three, three questions, um, because we found out that when you ask him a question, unless you are willing to interrupt him in the middle of a tirade, you're going to keep hearing his answers again and again. And by the way, the panel is required. Greg Evans. Hello, Mr. Evans. This is Martin McKay from the Network Security Podcast. Hey, how are you? I'm doing fine. Uh, I wanted to let you know I've got my co-hosts, Rich Mogul and Zach Lanier, on the phone with me. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, we're, we're playing now, this in the entirety this a so you can hear it all. one-hour podcast? No, this is, well? this is usually a half-hour podcast, and we're probably okay. only going to do about a 15 to 20-minute uh, interview. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. And what are we going over again? Uh, basically, we wanted to talk about you and uh, your company uh, because you're, you're 
You're obviously uh, listed as the world's number one hacker. Uh, well, I'm not the world's number one hacker. One reporter turned around, we had this conversation, took it and ran it, even with the book. So I tell that to everybody before I do. Now, remember, this is an individual who wrote a book, How to Become the World's Number One Hacker. Um, a report. <laughs> that is so false. I haven't hacked in years. Oh, okay. Outside of, you know, a controlled network. So I got people who work for me full time that do all of that, but no, I am so far from the world's number one app. So, but with that being said, um, we can go ahead and start this if you like. Yeah, and if it's okay, we might just ask you about that anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. Yeah, so, okay. more of the okay. same anyway. So that some okay. of you out, some of you guys have also interviewed Mr. So this Mr. Is Mark Evans and, and Rich and, and Zach, and we're here. What? You guys have also interviewed Mr. Evans. And, Did you get a chance to hear that? What's that? Did you get a chance to hear our interview? I watched, I listened to part of it, especially the end where everybody started laughing the moment he disconnected. <laughs> here today talking to Gregory Evans, who is the CEO of Legat Security International. How are you doing today, Mr. Evans? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. So, Mr. Evans, let's let's start with a little bit of your background. I mean, uh, you were convicted of hacking in the 90s, uh, and, and uh, how has that led you to a security career, and how has that shaped your views of security? Well, let's back up something. The first time I got in trouble was in the 10th grade, and my parents had to pay back $30,000 to AT&T then in order to keep me out of jail. Um, we used the school's computers, and we were doing using school's computers to make free phone calls and having it billed to um, a third-party number. And a friend of mine who was a programmer, and we were only we were working on COBOL at the time, so that tells you how long ago this was in the eighties. Um, he was a software writer, and he wrote it so it would randomly, you know, bill to a third-party company. So and even here, he's just avowing having done the actual act. The exact act. same company. What? Having done the over and line. over, which was the Taco Bell Corporation. So at the end of the month, Taco Bell Corporation received like a... Not Taco Bell. The Taco Bell Corporation. $100,000 phone bill. So, and they traced it back to myself and my co-conspirator, let's say, um, and this was in the 10th grade. And that's when I got in trouble and I had to leave school and I ended up going, because my parents were separated, and I left Maryland and went to Germany. And I lived in Germany. And that's where I learned to hack some more when I got hooked up with the guys at the Chaos Club. I don't know if you're familiar with them. The Chaos Club, by the way. They're uh, oh, you know, not, not to be confused with the Chaos Computer Club, but the Chaos Club. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're lesser known guys, guys, out, guys of, out of Belgium, not quite Germany. Yeah, we've heard of them and, and even dealt with a few of those people before. Okay, well, they were the first original hacking group. See, it's funny because most of the people, when I was doing hacking, I was told years ago, is that one thing you don't do is go around bragging about your hacks. Because what you're doing is, is against the law. See, that's the difference between a lot of hackers to this day. There's a lot of hackers out there that can out-hack me all day long because I don't even hack anymore, I'm a businessman. So, but what ends up happening is, is that they'll go out and commit a great hack, and then they will go out on Twitter, Facebook, or one of the chat rooms, IRC, and they will brag about, hey, I hacked. Why do that? Why bring attention to yourself? It's just like a person who goes out and commits a crime. Who robs a bank and then goes out and brags to all his friends, I just robbed a bank, and thinking that nobody's gonna know that it was you. The only way two people can keep a secret, Benjamin Franklin said, is if one of them did. So in this particular case, for years, I was always told, never go out and brag about it. Are you in it for the money or are you in it for the fame? And all the way up to the time I was hacking, and when I was hacking, there was different ways of doing exploits. I mean, one, you could do social engineering. One, when my very first hack, we were using war divers and we were calling every number in the company to get access to the modem. Two, um, when we had access to AT&T, MCI, Sprint, and WorldCom, and we were setting up toll-free numbers for a third-party telephone company, we just had most of the people inside the company on payroll. Now, when we started hacking, most of the people who go questions. out and say, oh, he's not hacking, he's in not doing this. Half an hour. Some of them weren't even was born then. Him. Ten years, I mean, I there was, was a 19-year-old kid who was going out talking stuff. Stop. 19 years. No. I've been no. in business for 20. 
So you, you'll barely hear us at all in this. So. so, I mean, you weren't even around to even say we, if you did, if you didn't. <laughs> so most people didn't even know my name because I didn't care if I made a name as a hacker or not. All right, you guys want me to continue with this or fast was, forward to the really good spark? Money okay, hold on. In this industry, <laughs> <laughs> it's like damn. You having flashbacks there? <laughs> oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa! All right, so this is going to be the last uh, just three minutes of the interview. Um, it's awesome. So the other parts were what? Played a double speed. I can't. The, way the, the software got it running in right now. So here we go. Basically, his Mac sucks. What, what, I'm sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to, to want to interrupt for a sec. And because, uh, um, you know, in, in, in part. So the question I'm asking right now is what's your end game? But, but you brought a bunch of interesting issues. And, and one of the things that came, you know, we're very interested in is what's your end game here? I mean, what do you, you, you overall, overall you talk about a lot of the issues related to the ski industry, the people in the industry, as well as how security is perceived Man, by, you know, just that average <laughs> folks also over our bar and certain and no, 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 with your involvement oh, with the up. industry. Um, is it just to build successful business? Is it to go out there and actually help people become more secure? You know, for, for you, what would be the end game? Actually, there's a couple things. One, I want to change the game. Because right now, everybody out there has this, this idea in their head that Hollywood has put out there that all computer nerds, all computer hackers are... So, just in case you missed that while balls are being thrown at us, uh, Gregory Evans wants to change the game. So For those computer nerds. He I mean, wants hackers. to change the game. He wants not, not make things more secure, just change the game. So, whatever the game means. Some fat you little kid with Coke bottle glasses with the tape in the middle who was in his mom's basement playing on the computer, never got the girl, never got pictures of the basketball team, and that's not true. Computer hackers carry just as much power as anybody else in the world and can be just as dangerous as anybody else in the world. Especially when they have bodyguards with guns. Where I was um, speaking to someone about how dangerous hackers are compared to El Qaeda. Wait, you're going to miss the Al Qaeda reference. El Qaeda, you know who your enemy is. You got people in the field. You can see them, they can see you. You can shoot at them, they can shoot back. When it comes to computer hacking, there's no face. It's like the boogeyman. You're it's the like boogeyman. The boogeyman. <laughs> and you have to find out. You know a crime's been committed, but how do you catch them? So my whole end game is, is to bring more light to like, look, computer hacking is here. It's here to stay. And you guys, all you guys who went around and picked on those computer nerds in high school, now these guys have power. So now, not just hackers, but just computer people, period. So I want to turn around and change the whole game and bring more knowledge to everything that's happening out there. In addition to that, make it more of almost like a lifestyle. When some of my friends who are entertainers, such as um, Russell Simpson. So just in case you missed that, um, what he's referring to is uh, he has a store where he sells swag. Effectively, swag that tell, uh, you can wear to talk about how awesome of a hacker you are, um, including uh, you know the, some of them feature the faces of some of the people in the audience. But um, but but wait, Zach, Zach, didn't he say that there were plenty of people who could outhack him? Well, no. The thing is, it's wrong to go and talk about how awesome of a hacker you are unless you're buying a shirt from him that talks about how awesome of a hacker you are. Oh, that makes right. that makes perfect sense. Well, and he's never been to DEF CON, has he? I think, I think we've given this asshat too much floor space already. Yeah. yeah. But don't you want to hear the part where he's hanging with Russell Simmons and Puffy? It, it comes up in just, like, within the next 30 seconds. Does he you want to call them days? 
When I'm sitting, sitting back and I'm talking to them years ago and they were coming out with their clothing line and they were sitting back telling me one time we were at a club and, well, we were at dinner before we went to the club, I should say, and we were sitting back talking at the table and he was saying how he make how hip hop has become more of a lifestyle. The way people dress, the puffies. way people talk is more than people picking up a microphone and just rapping. You don't have to be a rapper to be part of hip hop. And whereas in security, when it comes to computer hacking, it has become a lifestyle of his own. So, and the hacker community. So this is from a person who has been tweeting that he's going to be here that is not here. He owes me dinner, by the way. It's a group of just, people. And a, just a, I don't know, right? I think we're, we're running short on time. So spoil, spoiler alert, uh, he wants to be more, more or less, um, more or less like the voice of the hacker community. The hacker yeah, yeah. yeah, you guys do, um, absolutely. So he wants to help change the game so that people recognize how powerful hackers are, and he's going to be the one to do it. So, you know, whatever that means While to you. wearing super cool swag. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, his parents had to repay already, you know, how much, what, whatever he said, $30,000 or anything else. Were you so. done? Was that it? Well, we've got more, but I think people are tired of the interview already. Yeah. So we can move on. <laughs> By the way, this is a record. People can't even tolerate five minutes of this guy pre-recorded. So, yeah. The ass dollar. We lost the ass dollar. Someone in the EFF has the ass dollar. <laughs> One of the EFS bankers will have the ass dollar. You know, we could make a new ass dollar. Who, who wants to help make an ass dollar? I'm, I have too nice of an ass to make the ass dollar, to be honest. It's not as... Yeah, Jericho, get up here. Jericho. <laughs> we need an ass dollar. He will give it to us from a distance. Give it to us from a distance? It's your ass. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Oh, he has balls. No, I mean like literally balls. <laughs> I'm not touching that. <laughs> it hasn't been anywhere yet. You? You've had it. It's, it's not new, converted it's yet. Come on. Not it. It's going good. It was in my pocket. <laughs> exactly. Yo, where's it going? All right, enough of this. We're going down the wrong road. So. Okay, let's no, bring one, it all home. One, one last thing about that. The, if you want the, no, oh, over here. Mike. If you want the most amusing part of Evans, since you said changing the game, search for his rant called Changing the Game. It's on like either GregoryDEvans.com or Legat. You read that, and it will really explain who he is. And this, all this podcast just fits right into it. So it's worth it for that one rant. I mean, and, and that really comes down to the difference between somebody like Gregory Evans and like and us. Is we are part of the community. We are here for you guys to to, to talk to us and and to, to <laughs> give feedback <laughs> and throw balls at us. And, and we really are. All of us are part of the community. And and I don't think there's anybody up here who would disagree with that. So I think that's why we are different. I hope. Well, we don't own penny stock companies. We don't swindle people. So that would make us different as well. Yeah. And we don't get our mail spools dropped. <laughs> 7.5 gigs of them. Is that a challenge? <laughs> <laughs> no, Joseph, because it's just not going to happen. But I did hear I got owned tomorrow, so it's OK. Oh. All right, so we've been all over the place right now with this. This is uh, definitely even less structured than a, you know, an actual podcast. It is, it and it's more alcohol involved in it than a normal podcast. This is, this is a normal podcast for Jaded Exposure, only less alcohol. So I, I have a question. There's no goat sex and ducks being held. Yeah, there's no ducks either. There's tons of ducks with Jaded Exposure. Yeah. I, I was going to ask the question, why do you guys listen? And I don't want to know. <laughs> You like? <laughs> Say that louder. Hey, we're in Vegas. What? Eternal optimism. In other words, you think we might get better someday? <laughs> yeah, not gonna happen. Everybody up here is just thinking. Rich, Zach, and I. After 250 episodes, no. Yeah. Well, just before we wound this thing up. I couldn't let 250 episodes go without buying you a present, and I saw this, and I just couldn't not buy it, so... It is signed, but uh, I, couldn't find, <laughs> I couldn't find Rick Astley, so I got Rick Hayes to sign it instead, so... 
Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. I've, I've never seen one of these. What is it? It's, it's broken already. Don't worry. It will never be played. I don't like the end of a relationship that's in that record right there. We're breaking up. I'm sorry. <laughs> but we've already committed to Malta. And, and my wife has already agreed. Okay, so like many of our shows, this is a time where we've gone well past when we should have ended, and we finally realize it. So we want to thank you guys for showing up for this. We want to thank you guys for supporting all of the shows for all the different podcasters up here. Um, all my balls. It, it's kind of cool, you know, when we write, when we record these things, we put them out there. Yeah, we get random, you know, tracking stats numbers. But know that real people actually listen to this stuff. Uh, it, it, it's kind of cool. So, uh, and so, so wait a second. Before we go, what are all the podcasts we have have here? We have Josh, uh, John, Josh. Joseph, Joseph from the Southern Fried Security Podcast. We have Bones from Jaded Exposure. We have Infosec Daily. Uh, you're a trash security podcast. Woo. Uh, Paul from Paul.com. Just want to say congrats on 250, guys. It's awesome. Woo. Larry from Paul.com Security Weekly. Sorry, that was louder. Why do I always want to spell it W-E-A-K-L-Y? <laughs> Jer Jericho, I've listened to less than five podcasts in my life. <laughs> now that's an award. But you've given us plenty to talk about. Jordy, right. Jordy Rostad. No one, no family. one wants Jericho to listen to their podcast because then he just send us hate mail afterwards. Exactly. <laughs> With sexy he's a blessing. He doesn't already send you hate mail. Well, Is that yeah, just me? Well, all right, all right, Marty. Why don't you close this out like every week? Well, this has been another episode of the Network Security Podcast. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>